I want to know, with all you've been through the last number of years, are you going to shift to a more long-term strategy? I look at Morningstar, one year, three year, five year, your bottom quartile, but your claim is more short term. With your new ETF effort and with what you're doing with ARC, are you going to be still on trend or do you invest more for long term? We, we've always invested for the long term. And uh, what interrupted what was a very nice move up in innovation stocks, especially disruptive innovation, was a massive increase in interest rates, the likes of which we have never sure, seen. Of course. 24 fold increase. So all long duration assets, especially in 2022, were destroyed, including bonds, which are usually a flight to safety. They had their worst year last year uh, right. since the 1700s. There's no way in that environment that our strategy would have done well. But I do think that what's happening this year is that the market is starting to look over the Fed's moves, whether there's one more or not, uh, into uh, falling interest rates. You know, we started underperforming in 21 just with the anticipation of rising rates, and even more so in 22. So how are you going to change? I want to know how you're going to change the sobering quarters you've been through. What is the new Kathy Wood approach to macroeconomics frankly, pandemic economics intruding on your belief in innovation? Uh, if anything, innovation gains traction during tough times. And if you look at how the reason our, our portfolios are outperforming this year is... And they are. And they are. Is it is because they are gaining share in what is becoming a difficult environment. Right. right? And so, uh, one by one, we're going to earn our way back. Right. And it's all about revenue growth, margin expansion. Okay. In the Wall Street Journal, they do a fabulous thing with old farts like me, and it's people with over $5 million, and they believed in Kathy Wood. To a person, those retirees bought innovation, they bought tech, they bought Apple, 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 and they didn't listen to financial TV or radio. Can you do the Kathy Wood approach for one, three, five years, given the volatility you've seen? Yes, I think we're on the other side of that massive interest rate increase, mm -hmm. which did destroy a lot of performance. That's the most important thing. And we are ready for prime time. Many people are concerned about our kind of strategy. And, uh, and uh, the company we just acquired rises. Mm -hmm. in uh, because in Europe, in London here, uh, for all of Europe and UK, uh, uh, they're focused on global mega trends as well. And you know, interest rates hurt everyone in that space. If we are right, uh, and rates are going to come down at some point in the next year, you know, the, the market is is a discounting mechanism, uh, then uh, I think that uh, the muscle memory that, that hurt our strategy, and it all has everything to do with the tech and telecom bust, and people thinking, oh my gosh, are we here again? No. What happened during the 20 years that ended in the tech and telecom bubble is the seeds for, uh, for what is happening now were planted. Yeah. And, and this, John, is really important is that the profitability stream down the income statement of new tech is very different than 2000 tech. Let's talk about EVs yes. and not just Tesla. Yes. Is it good news for Tesla what's happening in Detroit right now? Um, yes, because if there's a strike, of course, uh, there will be more production shortfalls. Um, I, you know, I think that there's just now the, the supply chain has freed up, so unfortunately we'll have all kinds of questions about that. But, you know, I don't, I don't think it has anything really to do with the strike. It has uh, everything to do with the consumer preference shift towards better vehicles, electric, uh, that are falling in price, Tesla's leading that, uh, that price decline, simply by passing cost declines on to its uh, customers. Uh, so I think that's what's good for Tesla. The complaint we hear is that people can't afford these vehicles. Uh, that what is, we're seeing that in, the is news changing. in the UK, as you can see, Rishi Sunak is pushing back targets to get rid of all of these internal combustion engines to 2035 from 2030. Yes. Are we being unrealistic about this transition and well, how difficult we don't this is so. going to be? No, no, no. We do not think so. We actually, the total cost of ownership, now this is in the United States, it's a little bit different here, but the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle uh, 
fell below that of a gas-powered vehicle about two to three years ago. Soon, sticker prices. Does that include insurance? Yes, includes insurance. Yes, inc as I said, local differences, but yes, in the United States, that does include insurance. And in fact, Tesla is so sure that uh, its cars will have fewer accidents mm -hmm. and fewer fatalities that it's well willing to provide right. insurance. So yes, that does include everything, all in. You were at USC, you didn't get a B. Uh, Laffer called up Robert Kirby at Capital Group and said, just shut up and hire her. So you walk <laughs> into Capital Group, which is the land of an R squared and 98 Washington Mutual Fund Investment Company yes. of America. Yes. Everything is completely diversified out. You're the polar extreme. They threw you out. You almost fell into the Pacific Ocean. They were so upset with you. So you go out and you say, I'm not going tight R squared to SPX. I'm going out and do my own thing. Yes. People have prospered off of innovation and technology. How does that continue in America? Can you be less diversified and win five years out? Well, you mentioned Capital Group, and that is where I did start my career. And that is where um, I saw tremendous research and a long-term time horizon. So really what we're doing with ARC is just going back to the future. My initial experience, which was in the late 70s right. when I was in college, and uh, we're doing deep research, first principles based, white sheet of paper. But you're away from an R squared like Washington Mutual or the other funds. What's your R squared right now? Uh, to be honest, we're, the correlation of our uh, performance to broad-based benchmarks is very low, uh, for better or worse. What it, tells, what it tells our clients and prospective clients is we, uh, we have a very good diversification strategy. Our, our funds, the active weight, if you're comparing to MSCI World or S&P or NASDAQ, the active weight is less than 5%. So really good diversification strategy focused on companies uh, that are going to transform the way the world works. Uh, we look at the broad-based benchmarks, and sure, there are companies that are sustaining innovation, like an Apple, but they are not going to transform the way the world works from here. Our companies are.